Okay, welcome everybody to a special presentation of the Viking Red Zone. We are starting our Right or Wrong Tournament of Champions series. And what that is basically is we have developed a show last season where we kind of were, were always so serious when it comes to high school football and talking about the Benton County Vikings. And we have all these great guests all the time, these guys from Athens that do the radio and guys from River Valley. And we pull people from all over southeastern Ohio. And we kind of thought, wouldn't it be cool to get these guys to do some kind of battle on our show just to see who the best of the best is? So uh, we started this game show, basically. It's kind of like a, a game show of banter. And we called it Right or Wrong is what we called it. Now, it's set up to design that, to, to say a statement, and both contestants have to say whether that statement is right or that statement is wrong. And then they have to tell me why. And they have 30 seconds to explain why that isn't right or that isn't wrong. And then between how they or how they do is how I decide who gets the point or not. Now, we play to five points is what we do. Now, we have an eight-man tournament in this, okay? So the eight-man tournament is set up with our number one seed, who is actually 1-0 from the show. So, and is Lucas Moore. He is our number one seed. So our number two seed goes to 2-2 two and two, Nathan, Nathan Lamb. I forgot your name, Nathan. Nathan Lamb. He was our number two seed. Now, it trickles down from there, but these are the two guys everybody's got their eyes on, okay? So, these are the two guys that, and again, Nathan's only losses came to Lucas Moore and yours truly, Lux Herald. So, I'm actually, I'm hey, kind of the, the I'm the Karate Kid 3 here. I'm the one that's already won the tournament, and I'm just sitting back and let all the little little peons kind of go through the tournament, and then at the end, I might take on the winner. But But for now, I just get a free pass, so. Anyway, so our first two contestants are, for the left side of the bracket, Nathan Lamb, the number two seed, is taking on Brandon Grigsby, our first time contestant on the show, by the way. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you for having me. Thanks for having me on my own show, Lux. <laughs> so, okay, so obviously Nathan's got the experience factor here, okay? He's done this show four <laughs> times. He's done it more than anybody else. He had an epic battle with Lucas Moore on the show. That was, I mean, if anybody can go back on our shows and listen to it, them two went at it. It was a one-point win for Lucas at the end. I think we went into overtime, didn't we, in that show? I, yeah, I think I think we had an extra question, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that they had to go to. It was a really, really great show. So Now, Brandon, however, is kind of a wrestling guru, and he's never done this show before. But we have set up questions to kind of help him out, too. We've got a little bit of Michigan in there, which, you know, if he's anything like the rest of the Michigan people, there'll be losses too, but uh, we'll, we'll get there. So, okay, so we're going to start the show out again. We go to five, okay? So now what we're going to do is I'm going to ask the questions. It's not a question. I'm going to read the statements. You're going to give me a category. I'm going to read the statements, and whoever picks the category gets the first question. And from there, whoever gets the question right picks the category and gets to go first on that question, okay? So are we ready to go? Let's do it. You guys will start the Right or Wrong Tournament of Champions series right now. So, Brandon Grigsby, you are up to bat. The categories for today are the 2020 NFL Draft, Ohio High School Football, and the Big Ten Football. So, which category do you want to start off with today, Brandon? We'll start uh, right there in the Big Ten. I'm okay with Big it. Big Ten football. I, just, I wonder how much homework he's done on this. Uh, okay. That's what Michigan. everybody wants, so I'll just give it to them. All right. Okay. Are you ready? All right. Here we go. Michigan holds a 10-game win streak record over Ohio State all-time head-to-head. Ohio State, however, is on an eight-game win streak over the Wolverines since 2012. Right or wrong, Ohio State will break the 111-year-old 1909 record by beating Michigan for the next three seasons. Brandon Grigsby, is that statement right or wrong? That statement is wrong. Of course you're going to say that. Tell us why. Hold on here. Hold on. Go ahead. Let's hear it. Tell us why. you got 30 seconds. Okay. Justin Fields is done after this year, most likely. And uh, Ryan Day is not a proven recruiter like Urban Meyer. So I think once those recruits run out, it's going to be on Ryan's guys to um, – kind of carry that load and I don't know if they're ready for that pressure man you know Urban's got a uh, pretty big reputation some shoes to fill and uh, a pretty good first season I'll give him that you know but uh, it still is a lot of Urban talent on that team 
Yeah. Wow. All right. Hey, good, good, hey, good job, though, man. Good job. Okay. Nathan Lamb, do you want me to read the right or wrong part of that again for you? No. He's okay. Good. Tell us, is that statement right or wrong? Uh, the statement's right. They will win the next three games and probably more. Uh, number one, you still have Urban Meyer at the university pulling these recruits in. So it's not, it doesn't matter if he's a coach or not. You still have him pull the recruits in. Uh, number two, I, I believe overall this this offseason in college football, Ohio State has the number one recruiting class. So that's going to help for the next two or three years. Uh, those two things alone right there are going to are going to catapult the Buckeyes, at least three, maybe even more than that. Okay, well, I want to say both of, both of you guys did a great job on that one. Uh, mainly, you know, and I'm going to go with Nathan here. That was awesome, man, by the way. So, now, listen, Brandon, you did hit some good points. I did have some stuff in there about Irvin Meyer not being there in Ryan Day. But the main thing is Ohio State has just basically passed up Michigan in a competitive sense, so much so that even Michigan doesn't even hardly consider it a rivalry anymore just basically because they can't compete. So, I don't – and a hardball is awful. He's not proven he can beat anybody. So as long as he stays there and they're not going to fire him anytime soon, I, I think Ohio State gets the record. So good Ooh, job I'm, for Nathan. So I'm glad it's unbiased. It's, it does, <laughs> that, 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 that is unbiased, by the way. So I yeah. said, point. So if every explanation you give isn't like a minute and a half long with one breath in between, <laughs> we'll know how unbiased that really was. <laughs> Continue. Hey, it's unbiased. You did a good job, though. I was, Let's I was go. Nathan Lamb, you get to pick the category, bud. Uh, let's go with high school football. High school football. You knew that was coming, didn't you? <laughs> so, okay. In 2021, the OH, OH, bleh, let me restart that one. In 2021, the OHSAA has announced a move to allow 12 teams to make the playoffs in each region over the eight teams per region previously allowed. Right or wrong, Nathan? 12 teams making the playoffs is a horrible idea for the integrity of high school football and sports. Right or wrong? Horrible idea to have 12 teams. Are you ready? I'm ready. Oh, hold on. I got the button on. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, it's not going – it's wrong. It's not going to hurt the integrity of high school football. I'll tell you why. Because the way the matchups are going to be, you're going to have 12 playing a, a – basically – uh, and 11-6 and, and so on. So the first-round matchups that we have now between the 8s and the 1s and the 7s and the 2s are almost always blowouts. This scenario, you're going to have closer games between teams that are closer together in, in uh, talent, and also you're going to have two rounds of home field advantage. Okay, that's all we get. Okay, good job. All right, Brandon, tell me, is that statement right or wrong? Um, I also think it is wrong. Really? Okay, tell us why. Um, I think getting more school or more schools in the area's money is never a bad idea. Um, I think everybody wants more football, so getting more teams involved, especially at a high school level, um, you know, is is how it didn't hurt anything. Uh, especially being from Benton County, you got to think that gives us a little bit more of a window to finally get to that next hump of uh, playoff football, which we haven't seen in, I believe, like 13 years, 14 years. My senior year. I forgot to hit the button, by the way. So you got to keep going. Let's go. Keep going. Oh. Whenever you're ready. But I'm good. That was it. I think okay. it's a plus. Get Ben County okay. in there. Well, I just will... love, love. yeah, yeah. Before you, before you give, before you award the point. Uh, yeah. <laughs> how how was how was making the playoffs your senior year? Uh, how did that affect you? I mean, how, how well, we, didn't, we didn't make the playoffs my senior year. Now, now. I just oh, want yeah. to say, in my in my personal opinion, and again, my personal opinion doesn't mean the statement's right or wrong, okay? So before I give the winner of this, I do not like 12 teams making the playoffs. And your guys' points are valid points for making my statement wrong, both of them. But I don't like it because now, in order to make the playoffs as an eight seed now, at least you've got to still go seven and three, eight and two. You've got to still put up a pretty good season. We finished somewhere around 12th place the last three years in, in, in our region, and we've been five and five and four and five and, and, and four and six and whatever. And then, so, so now you're looking at teams that can make the playoffs now at, at five and five and six and four, and you muddle it now. Now, now, okay, so you made the playoffs in your 11th seed. What's that mean? It doesn't put you anywhere close to the best Benton County team if you do that, right? So that, that, that's my opinion on it. 
Hey, I can say well, that I if I had seen a playoff game at six and or at five and five or six and four my freshman and sophomore year, I'd have been very happy. Because one and nine the last two didn't really. You would have, but it wouldn't have. It, 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 I just, I mean, yeah, it's, it's like getting a participation trophy. You're happy you got it, but what's it really mean in the grand scheme of things? So go ahead, Nathan. I, I get your points, Luds, and they are valid and, and true. But to when you look at the scope. OHSA football in the playoffs, especially in the first round, there are a lot of blowouts. You're not going to have as many blowouts in this scenario because you're going to see teams like Unioto playing Benton County in the first round of the playoffs. Those two calibers, instead of, you know, if, if Unioto makes the playoffs and they go on and play a St. Clairsville, that's not going to happen until round two. So you're going to have not only more football, but you're going to have teams that not necessarily – you know, been able to to make the playoffs, get there, and teams that haven't been able to host playoff games be able to host playoff games. So I think it's a win-win. I think there's there's so many good things that it does kind of outweigh the fact that, you know, the points that you're making, because I, I, I agree with you. I Everything you said is true, but I just think that it's better uh, overall, and I agree with Brandon. I think, uh, you know, you, you take a team that's 500, they're not going to make the playoffs, but if you take a team that's 500 and they, and they get that taste of playoff, you know, atmosphere – that could catapult a program and, and that's where we're at uh, in terms of a, of a program. And that's, you know, it's something that we could use to yeah. our advantage. I like it. Okay. Well, I, and I agree. That. Okay. So let's move on. I will go. Okay. Again, for the wrong answers. And I, this is what I want to point out how good this was. Actually, the, the points of emphasis were, were that, you know, the major, the major schools that are ones and twos slaughter the seven and eights. And now you got a competitive first round battle. Good point by Nathan. And then the other thing that Brandon brought up is the financial status, and you're giving more teams more money, which is helping out the teams. So the other point that I made is it allows teams with those slow starts and those teams that, that might have got injuries early on to get healthier and, and, and maybe possibly limp into the playoffs to be able to do something. So neither one of you talked to that. So points of emphasis versus points of emphasis, I think Brandon's is a little bit better because financially is really about all you're really going for, putting a 12 and 11 team seat in there. So – I got to give it a close one, but I got to give the points to Brandon. So, so it is one to one right now. I can't believe Brandon won the high school questions, but uh, we're going to go ahead and go one to one. And Brandon, you get to pick the next category. Let's uh, let's go uh, NFL. NFL, okay. Maybe a little bit more fair playing field. Okay, all right. So, 2020 NFL draft. Tua Tagovailoa was the second QB taken off the board, going fifth to the Miami Dolphins in the 2020 NFL draft. Right or wrong, two will have a better rookie season than Joey Burrow. Wrong. Wrong. Tell us why. Okay. Joey Burrow is getting plugged into a system with A.J. Green, Tyler Boyd, and I think John Ross. You know, that's a pretty solid system surrounding you. Uh, Brian Flores down there in Miami, proven to be a pretty smart guy when it comes to building for the future. I think he's going to rush Tua in there without a lot of support around him especially when Ryan Fitzpatrick's down there doing what he does, sneaking, you know, sneaking off six, five wins a season. Uh, I think you, you just take it slow with Tua, and that's they're gonna, that's going to be their approach. Okay, Nathan Lamb, right or wrong on that statement? Uh, I think the statement's right. Um, number one, you, when you look at the Cincinnati Bengals, they, they were in the basement of the AFC North last year. They were a two-win team. Uh, if you look at the AFC uh, – East versus the AFC North, that's the biggest difference. The AFC East now is trash compared to what it has been in the years past. And the AFC North may be the best division in football. I see Cincinnati winning five or six games and finishing last. That's how good this division is going to be. I just think the defenses in this division is what's going to to hurt uh, Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals in year one. Now, I think uh, as years go, it be very successful. Okay. All right, we got to stop you there. So, Wow, great points on both sides of the, of the of the arena here. I just want to say that that right now for the the right things, it was going to be you know that that if you want to say too, it was going to have a better thing. It was what what Nathan said about you know Ryan Fitzpatrick's there. Uh, one of the things Nathan missed, I think, is he had to talk about to his injury and the fact he may not be playing at all his, his first season. So so he kind of missed that one. And so I'm going to say I take it slow, but yeah, the, you know, yeah, but you didn't mention the injury. So I'm going to go with Nathan on this. Injuries, one. I, I think but, Nathan but, nailed okay. it. I, 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 I think when you're talking about the Cincinnati Bengals in the division, I think that's the biggest point of emphasis. I mean, if Tua does get out there, he has a much better chance of having a better season than, than Joey Burrow does just because of the defenses they're going to face. So point to Nathan. We are two to one, Nathan, and Nathan gets to pick the category. So 
go high school football. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Okay. Talk about the Bengals having a tough I get your point. I get it. Hey, it's not my opinions though. It's not my opinions. I'm not. I love my Bengals, but you got to be realistic. The defenses yeah. are stacked in the, in the in the AFC North. They just right. don't. So, yeah. So, are you going to cry every time you lose a question, Brandon? I mean, you're yeah. all wearing a Michigan shirt. Out the bias, but the so, first one was no, the second one was Cincinnati. Uh, Come on. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, what here we that? go. Ohio high school football. I'm trying for you, dude. The 73 Wellston Golden Rockets were the only TBC team to make the playoffs in 2019. Right or wrong, the Wellston Golden Rockets will make the playoffs in back-to-back years for the first time in school history under Mike Smith. Nathan Lamb, is that statement right or wrong? Statement's wrong. Hit the button. Okay, good. You're good. So you lost uh, You lost some offensive firepower. Uh in the, the running back that they had uh, second year coach. Listen, last year, their, their schedule was, was pretty weak uh, overall, the non-conference you had Jackson on there, which was an always a loss. Now you've got Oak Hill who, by the way, had a winning record in the SOC last year as game one. Uh, so the, I see the same thing continuing there, get off to a slow start. Nelson New York's going to be better. Uh, you know, I don't see no more than three four in conference. That's just not enough. Okay, Brandon Grigsby, is that statement right or wrong? Will Wells to make the playoffs again this year? Uh, that statement is right. It is right. All right, tell us why, man. <laughs> because if I know one thing about Wellston football, it's that they know how to build on momentum, all right? <laughs> we gave them a little bit of confidence my junior year, and next thing you know, it was like four years before we beat them again. And I don't know much about current football, but history repeats itself. And all it takes is one strong season for that team to skyrocket into the next level of high school football. And that's what I think is happening right now. I like how you did that, the play on words. That's good. Yeah, well. All I got, man. <laughs> okay. Well, part of the part of the problem with Nathan's argument here is that he talked about Wilson beating us, and they haven't done it since uh, Eisenhower was president, I think. So. Keep but, calling but, the, school. But, the, but, okay, here's the thing. Uh, I'm going to say that that statement is actually – hold on here. I, I got to go with Nathan on this one. He kind of brought it up perfectly. He said Ryan Mollahan's gone. That's a big loss. That was their main athletic guy. Uh, their schedule, you know, did you did say the schedule was easy last year, but they had Jackson, and then they lost him. So you were a little bit wrong on that. But you brought it back by saying O'Kill's back on the schedule, and O'Kill is not a powder puff team either. So so you did good there. So close one, but I got to give it to Nathan. Three to one. I'm sorry, Brandon. I'm rooting for you, dude. Let's do this. Nathan, you're up. Pick the category. So. Let's let's stick with high school football, baby. High school for rounding it out. This is the last question in so the high school football category. So, so you can do this, Brandon. I got faith in you, even though you are wearing a Michigan shirt. COVID nineteen has affected the entire world, and even high school football is not immune from it. Group workouts were shut down. Kids are stuck, not working out, and coaches were not allowed to have contact with athletes for months. As of May twenty six, teams can start working out again in controlled situations. Right or wrong, OHSAA should flop spring and summer sports for the 2020 season. Is that question right or wrong, Nathan? You got the timer? In my head. Okay. Yeah. So that's wrong. Um, number one, uh, if you look at the way that this virus was spreading in the wintertime, really, it's just like the flu, they say. So it's going to be worse uh, come next uh, February, March uh, than it will be now. Um there probably isn't going to be a vaccine by that by then, at least not, you know, one that everybody can get a hold of. So I would say go ahead and do what you're doing now. Even if you have to play it without fans, uh, you know, let's just sports are starting to come back and it always. Okay. To All right, man, I got to cut you off there, though. OK, Brandon Grigsby, tell me, is that statement right or wrong? Should they flop the fall in spring sports? Uh, they, sh- they should just leave it the way it is. Am I on a timer now? You're on the timer, dude. Oh, yeah. Usually give me a heads up, man. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, no, dude. No, I just think, uh, you know, the, the sports mean a lot to these kids. So, you know, taking it away from it in any capacity is a, is a big deal. So the fans leaving would be a huge effect to them. But taking it completely away would just devastate them. I couldn't imagine uh, what, what high school would mean to me without sports. Um, you got to let them play. Okay. All right, man. Okay, so, well. 
I mean, here's the thing. Nathan brought up a great point that I didn't even think about in my, in my things is about, the, and it, you know that too, the, 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 the health issues and the, when the cold weather kicks in is actually a pretty big deal I didn't think about. And nothing's getting canceled, Brandon, so they're going to still get their sports. It would just been flopped. So, so I got to go with Nathan on that one, four to one. And, okay, Nathan, you get to pick the category, but there's no more high school football. Brandon, come on. I know you, you're a Michigan fan, but you ain't got to play the game like Jim Harbaugh. Let's go. Nathan, you picked the category. So, uh, you guys remember when he claimed he was going to beat Ohio State and go to the Rose Bowl and did it? <clears throat> I don't remember that. Was that back before the internet? <laughs> uh, it was back when they won their national title back in 1863. Oh, so, that was back. Uh, oh, yeah, that yeah. was before the internet. <laughs> uh, I know okay. Brandon. Hmm. I know Brandon, Michigan and and the Big Ten. I love the Big Ten. Not so much Michigan. Let's go with the NFL. <laughs> All right. We're going to go with the NFL. Okay. Are we question two in the NFL? We're question two, right? We're question two. Okay. It's four and one. Okay, Nathan. Or Brandon, this is do or die for you here. Okay. You got to pull this one off. So four to one. So the talk of the NFL draft was the strength of the, sorry, the talk of the NFL draft was the strength of the wide receiver class. And it proved to be right with three wide receivers going in the top 20 picks and Henry Ruggs going to the Raiders at 12, Jared Judy going to the Broncos at 15, and C.D. Lamb going to Dallas at 17. Right or wrong, C.D. Lamb will be the most successful wideout in the 2000, from the 2020 draft. Is that statement right or wrong, Nathan? Timer? Timer's up. Yeah, that, that's right, because number one, he's overall on the best team. Uh, I know Dak has, has been up and down, but they have a strong running game, and usually, you know, you have a good running game that opens up the passing game. Uh, I feel like it, it's, you know, it's, it's down to where he's either got to put up or shut up, and I think uh, CD going there is going to be great for him, and he also has an awesome last name, so that, that's why he's going to do that. <laughs> I never realized that. He's a lamb. Good job, dude. So, all right, Nathan, right or wrong, C.D. Lamb will be the most successful wide receiver out of the 2020 NFL draft. I'm going to say wrong. Okay. And I'm going to say that C.D. Lamb's success came from having three Heisman cont- – or, well, two Heisman quarterbacks and one Heisman contending quarterback throwing to him for the last three years in the Big 12. Uh, I think Jerry Judy was doing much more in an SEC conference with a much more elite defensive. Um, Dak kind of flutters out there towards the end of the season. And I think CD's going to have a hard time just breaking right past Michael Gallup and um, Amari Cooper. So I definitely think he's not going to have the best season out of the wide receiver class. Okay, well, I do believe that Brandon's got this one. He is right that that statement is wrong. I think the perfect thing about CD Lamb having his struggles is that you got Amari Cooper as the number one. You got Zeke Elliott that you're going to run the crap out of the ball with, too. And Witten is still floating around there somewhere as a retired old man with a wheelchair, but he's still there. So <laughs> I, I don't see C.D. Lamb getting those kind of touches where Henry Ruggs is a number one wide receiver in an Oakland wide receiving core that has absolutely nobody. And Jerry Judy's going to, to, to Denver where he's going to get thrown the ball way more than C.D. Lamb is. So I think Who's Nathan Lamb got this one. So what's that? Who's their quarterbacks, though? Drew Locke, dude. Uh, 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 Derek Carr? You can't say Derek Carr's not any good. He's so, well, they're in Vegas now, dude. They're going to be all hopped up on. That's going to get swapped out for Andy Dalton halfway through. Hey, that might be a good thing. <laughs> Either way, it's going to be rugs, though. Either way. So, all right. So, it is two to four. Nathan keeps the contest alive, by the way. So, Nathan, you are up. You got the categories to pick from. You got NFL football, and you got one more question left in college football, Big Ten. So, you mean me? Nathan. Or, I'm sorry, Brandon. Yeah. You keep yes. calling him me. Yeah, yeah, I'm just rolling with it though, because I'm, I'm yeah. a professional. I, I you kind of look like you look like what Nathan their Brandon used to look like about a month ago, so when you had the big beard. So yeah, all right, we'll stay in the NFL. We'll just round it out. Okay, we'll the NFL. The, thir- yeah, the third, one. the third question in the NFL. It is two to three right now, by the way, right? So two it's two to four, two to four. So okay, the Cincinnati Bengals selected Joey Burrow number one in the NFL draft, and Vegas has him projected. With 3,700 yards, with 23 touchdowns, and 303 rushing yards, ranking him as the 10th best predicted QB in the 2021 season, if that happens. Right or wrong, 
Joey Burrow will exceed all those expectations his rookie season. Tell me if that's right or wrong, Nathan. Or Brandon, I'm sorry. I got it right. That is wrong. Okay. That is wrong, and I'll tell you why. Okay, Um, it's wrong. As had previously been mentioned by someone else earlier in the discussion, uh, that AFC North is loaded with defense right now. I think Joey Burrow has an exceptional rookie season. Uh, I think he comes close to those stats. I don't think he goes much far beyond. Um, You know, Baltimore and Cleveland have really made some upgrades on defense these these last couple seasons. And the weapons are there. He could do it. I just don't see it his rookie year. But I definitely think within a few years he's competing for the top quarterback in that division. Okay, Nathan Lamb, is that question right or wrong? That's right. Uh, And as previously stated by somebody else, uh, (laughs) (laughs) Listen, Joe Burrow has always exceeded expectations, no matter if it was in high school, in college, and he's going to do the same thing in the pros. Uh, you don't become a number one draft pick and, and not be a, a solid quarterback. Obviously, playing in the AFC North is tough, but they finished last, so they have the weakest of the rest of the non-conference. They play the last place teams from the other divisions. They also play uh, the the NFC East, I believe, which are... Okay, hey. He didn't have any that success in LSU. I, I loved how Brandon tried to use how you won one question to categorize it into this. And this had nothing to do with wins and losses, though. This had to do with just getting 3,700 yards. So, yes, the defenses in the AFC North are tough, but I don't think 3,700 yards is out of the question. Great points by you, Nathan. I got to give you the points. That's going to be the game. But I really liked all the things you said right there. It was a good job. Uh, it is a fact that they, their non-conference schedule is the weakest out of everybody because they were the lowest, and that's going to that's gonna catapult it. Let's be honest, 23 touchdowns is not that hard to get, you know. And when you're going to be throwing the ball like he's going to throw with a healthy A.J. Green, he's probably going to get those numbers. That doesn't make him a pro bowler year one. I don't think those numbers are out of reach. So Nathan Lamb wins the first round of the right or wrong, and Brandon just looks like we just cheated him out of his own girlfriend or something. I don't know, but. No, so, no, that's not obvious. Nathan advances. Our first advancement to the semifinals is Nathan Lamb. I know Lucas Moore is going to be looking at you, and I hope Lucas Moore ain't overlooking Matt Frazee. So oh, we'll see what happens. Takes him out. I hope Frazee takes him out. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you have anything you want to say to Lucas right now, Nathan? That you know, maybe get him a little hyped up. Compliment the Bengals, and you'll win. <laughs> uh, Lucas, I'm not sure if you can hear me all the way from the top up here. Um, <laughs> you know, where you're at right now. Uh, I just want to thank my crew, uh, my sponsors, 